Okay, really quick here. I finally got this. Uh, I got this screen capture thing here. I'm on uh, on a website called uh, Homemade Circuits and Schematics Blogspot.ca, and it's uh, old Swagga team Majumdar here. Pretty cool guy. He gets back, answers your questions. Uh, he's not the smartest guy in the world, but he's smarter than I am. And uh, there are a few fire bugs on this. Let's be, care be careful. Old Swaggy team there. He's uh, he's not much for isolation, and uh, he flies at her hook shit up to the mains and <laughs> blows a few LEDs. And yeah, so be careful with <laughs> with these designs. <laughs> Don't just build something off of this and then uh, and then have it be mission critical. Definitely add some fuses to some of these circuits, and, and you know. Due diligence. A lot. There's a lot of dangerous stuff on this website, basically, that could cause fires. So you know, keep that in mind. Okay. So anyway, um, here we go. Uh, this circuit. No, 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 no. This is the other one. This one here. Uh, okay. How to drive a relay through an optocoupler. Uh, where are we here? That circuit there. Okay. Um, this is new to me but probably not new to many other people. Concept, uh, blocking oscillator style charger or an Alistair uh, circuit desulfator. Uh, I'm thinking that the battery itself can be the source. All right. Now, there are many different ways to go about this. For the longest time, I was thinking, well, I'll use an ADC um, input on a microprocessor, and I may still do that, but... One of the difficulties with that comes with the, um, the problem of, of spikes, okay? So these charges are very spiky, and these spikes, um, the most definite way to avoid having these spikes is to shut the charger off momentarily, take a measurement, act upon that, and then turn the charger back on. Um, that's in my mind. Now, that may still be incorporated into this concept, but look at this here, this optocoupler, okay? So if this was a voltage source, the battery that's being charged, for example, um, we step down the current, we heavily current limit the, uh, the input to this. But look at it, it's not, it's not an ADC, it's not a digital input, it's just an LED as far as I can tell. Um, I've never actually played with these, but I'm thinking that it's just an analog way of going about it. And here we have, um, you know, an LED, big deal. So depending upon whether that shines bright enough, it then basically activates a base in another transistor, which in then in turn gives a signal, which can then in turn activate the base of yet a larger signal transistor which will then pass current through a relay and activate a switch so if the switch was set to uh, you can see we got two throws here single pole double uh, throw um, if one of the poles or the throws was set up so that charging occurred at no cost of additional energy in other words it's just on all the time and when this relay activates it's shut off well, then that would turn off charging. Now, if, in turn, if this was consuming energy to turn off the charger, if you will, then the voltage will, across the charging battery, eventually drop. As it then drops by consuming energy off of this coil, I mean, it could be sending off, a, uh, it could be doing anything at this point. It could be activating a buzzer uh, every 10 minutes. It could be doing uh, a number of things to let you know that it was done charging. Um, but, also importantly, if it falls off and loses charge quickly because of this, it will come back on because its normal state is to be on. If you've got the power on, then it's charging. Uh, but it's stopping it from overcharging as well. Okay, now that's thinking along the lines that it can handle the spikes going basically right through here. Now, because the thing is, is sure, we can put a capacitor and we can use Zener diodes and whatnot, but you don't want to quench that spike. And, you know, I've gotten into all kinds of arguments with people before, but if you take an oscilloscope, and here's one from Mile High, okay? <laughs> 
If you take an oscilloscope and you actually look at what's going on with a sulfated battery and you set your time divisions such that you can get right down and see a small peak, you can actually see that peak across that battery voltage. Now you wouldn't think that you could and if the battery is actually um, in decent shape, no, you're not going to see that pulse, okay? The point is, is that there's a lot of internal resistance in a poor battery. So it's resisting the ability for that spiked in output to actually go into the battery and quench the spike. Consequently, the spike still exists. And if you have monitor monitoring uh, circuitry, that is going to become the point of least resistance and it will in turn experience the spike. Now if you take care of that with a high voltage capacitor, you've just sucked the spike up and it can no longer do any good on the battery either. So it becomes an interesting thing in terms of how do we control, how do we automate the Bedini circuit, right? And um, it's been of interest to me for a while because it's nice to get the desulfator going and not have to worry about it and be able to go to work. And I'm a single parent with a little kid. And, you know, I've, I've um, had times where I would like this. And the other thing is, is when I let other people use the circuitry, you need to give them this long education. And it's just ridiculous. It's so unautomatic that it really becomes a pain in the ass essentially um, at times so here 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 we are with that that's one concept now here's another uh, neat thing on this website uh, homemade circuits and blogs bot here and this is the, the here you are designing a double DC input hybrid energy converter charger circuit okay now this is something I've never seen before Oh, okay, this is, uh, there is a really important link that is actually contains more information uh, right there in, in, the, in the top of the article. But moving right along, if you look at the diagram, okay, now here's, a, here's an interesting thing. What he's got going on here is he's got DC input 1 and DC input 2. Okay, now they're both going into these MOSFETs here, and their, and their output is consequently uh, directed by uh, diodes. Okay, and then up here you have your your bucking or boosting uh, inductor. Okay, now the gates, as you can see, here, okay, are coming down through this back down to here, right? Okay, so now the output on this here, which is uh, basically 555 PWM, uh, we have a small amount of uh, current available on pin pin out three, uh, going through this. Uh, resistor here mainly because we're looking at a voltage control device I think you know, the gate here right so we don't want you know like it to whap this sucker real hard like we're trying to kick down the door um, now so in turn what we could have is we could have one DC characteristic here and a second DC characteristic here we could have a 300 watt solar panel right here and we have a wind characteristic, let's say. Uh, of course, after you rectifying the three phase, right, you wouldn't be entering a AC into here. Um, so yeah, you know, you got two completely different types of energy available to this, and the concept is is that they buck, and uh, the energies go together to turn around and charge batteries. Now, I like to play with this a little bit because. I think what Swagatam has done is he's oversimplified the uh, intention of that document. But nonetheless, um, it would be fun to play with, uh, to, to, to have multiple inputs. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, even when you take two charge controllers, and some of you may have experimented with this, you take two charge controllers, okay, and you put them at work to the same battery bank. Unless those and one's for wind and one's for for solar, unless unless those charge controllers are exactly set up to have bulk float and equalization at the same voltage points, unless they behave the same way, then they're really going to basically retard one another. 
and you'll lose any lodge basically because one will be trying to float while the other one's trying to bulk they can get real stupid real fast and and they're really not seeing the big picture because they think they know what they're giving the bank but there's some other charge controller that's giving them something too so for example when they go into float it says okay well the battery voltage is sitting right like this um, I'm only going to pass this amount of current right now. Meanwhile, the other charge controller is saying the same thing. So ultimately, you're passing more current than Float wants to see. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, it's interesting. If you have some thoughts on that, I'd like to hear about those two. Thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you later. Come on.